So you're thinking about buying a 3D printer, but still have a few questions in your head. Like for example, which printer should I buy? Or would it be a good investment? Or maybe what am I really gonna do with a 3D printer? I'm gonna try to answer these questions from my own experience so you get something to work with and choose your own destiny. Let me start with what am I gonna do with a 3D printer? In my case, one day I came to the kitchen, I saw my daughter with a water bottle that was leaking and we realized that the seal pack inside was missing. I just went, took my printer, printed, and that was it. Also, another day I came to the kitchen and my toaster was missing the handle to push the toast in. Again, I just took the printer, printed a part, put it together, and now I have my toaster good. Those things I could fix quickly and at home without having to spend money or search on the internet for a new piece that most probably you are not gonna find. And if you find it, the shipping is gonna be more expensive than the part itself. Then you can also use the 3D printer for a side business. Like in my case, I have an FPV shop and I print a lot of parts for my customers' drones, basically in TPU designed by them or downloaded from the internet or sometimes designed by me. If you are an engineer, you might be using a 3D printer to create prototypes at home to help you with your projects. Or you could be the cool dad that is printing toys and Christmas decoration for your house. All that you can do with a 3D printer. Then you have the next question. Is it a good investment? A 3D printer could cost you from a few hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. What you buy depends on what you want to do with it, how much money you have, and most importantly, how much time do you have? 3D printing can become a very time-consuming hobby, depending a lot on what you want to do with it. In my case, I got a 3D printer to print parts for my customers, and at the same time, I have the chance to fix things around the house and do things for my friends. So it was a very easy investment from my point of view. Then it comes the most difficult question of them all. What printer to buy? You have two routes. You can go the route of choosing a printer that is already built or semi-built, like a, se like a semi-assembled kit from Prusa, for example. Or you can go the route of building everything from scratch by yourself. The building from scratch offers you an extremely interesting experience where you're gonna learn a lot about your printer and how it works and why it can do the things that it can do. All this knowledge is going to help you troubleshoot in the future if something is failing or if you want to do something in a different way. But at the same time, this is a lot of work. In my case, when I was building my Voron 2.4, it took me like a month to go from the box to start printing in some good quality. When you are selecting everything from scratch, you have the opportunity to get the best of the best. So each part that you choose fits what you have in your mind. And you can create kind of like the best beast in the world. At the same time, this means that you can end up with a very expensive machine because you are choosing these very quality parts from different vendors, shipping, and all that just adds to the price of your printer. A fully assembled printer could be cheaper. The manufacturers do sometimes some compromises to give you something on a price range that sounds more interesting for beginners. One such a printer that is getting a lot of popularity right now is the Bamboo Labs printers. They are towards, they are created towards the audience of someone that doesn't have a lot of knowledge on printers, 3D printers, but they want to get into it with something that is very good, good speed and good quality. These kind of printers are doing most of it by themselves and the prices are not super expensive. So if you are in the market, you are a beginner, please have a look at Bamboo Labs. They have something that looks interesting it's kind of new, so it's not proven on time, but it looks like a good option. Also, when you go with one of these companies like Prusa or Bamboo Lab, you should have warranty and support. 
those companies are bigger and they can do those kind of things. This is something to keep in mind when you are buying or choosing your printer because if you're going the route of building yourself, the support that you're gonna get is from the community, from people on the internet, articles, and these kind of things. So you are dependent on the goodwill of other people. Instead, if you're buying from a company, they have to have support and warranty. So if something goes wrong, you can leave the phone, call them, and get some kind of support from them. This is not always perfect, but at least you're paying for a service that you can demand to get back. Still, choosing a printer from the lower range of the price that I'm talking about could be a huge headache for you. Those printers, they don't have a lot of automatic things, um, and then you end up doing a lot of work manual. Let's talk about, for example, that very famous first layer. The first layer on a 3D printer is super important because you have to get it perfect so everything else that builds upon that it's going to have sense and it's going to make something an end, an end product that is good. In the case of uh, more affordable printers you have to do a lot of manual calibration sometimes even every time that you're gonna print. And I'm talking about the bed and like the screws and making sure that the distance between the nozzle and the bed is correct by using different techniques and things like that. And if you decide, for example, to change the nozzle because you want to do another kind of job, then you have to redo all this process, which again can become a headache if you are not very familiar or if you just want to go and print fast. If instead you choose something on the higher range of the price list, you are getting machines that can do a lot automatically. All this process that I've been talking about of, of uh, calibrating the first layer and making sure that the distance of the nozzle is the right one when you ch change something on the printer, all that happens with the touch of one click on your keyboard. It takes a few minutes to do the calibration, but the machine does it itself. You don't have to think about it, which is, in my case, wonderful. I can just upload the model, click print, and forget about it, and I'm going to get a good quality kind of all the time. Then is the other thing that I'm going to say about the different ranges on prices. When you're printing 3D models, you are using filaments, plastic filaments, and they are a few different kind of filaments. Depending on what you want to do with that model, you are going to choose something different. Cheaper models of 3D printers are limited to what kind of plastic they can use to print. The most common one is PLA, it's the simplest one to print, and most printers can do PLA. But most probably, those printers on the lower range are not going to be able to do plastics that are more demanding, like nylon or anything reinforced with carbon fiber or glass or anything like that. So if you're choosing a printer, it might be a good idea to give you some freedom. And even if you don't know what kind of plastic are you gonna use because you are a beginner, if you choose something that accepts more kind of plastic, you're going to have more fun in the future when you are going to try something new and you can actually use the same printer without having to change a lot of parts to print on TPU, for example. Well, this is all that I have for you today. I hope that you got something interesting from this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.